hot. Has chocked with envy as Philip's last wish gave James Duke of Edinburgh a title plus specious gift. The Duchess of Edinburgh seemed to pull out all the stops when attending today's Easter Sunday service alongside other royals. Mother of two Sophie, 58, commanded attention in a cream Philip Tracy hat, which boasted a wide brim and an eye-catching height as she arrived at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. Attending the royal event alongside her husband Prince Edward, 59, and their 15-year-old son James, Earl of Wessex, Sophie looked effortlessly elegant for her first appearance at the annual service since gaining the title of Duchess of Edinburgh. Someone on Twitter pointed out that James, Earl of Wessex was wearing a necktie with Land Rovers in it. It's a small tribute to the late Prince Philip who owned a Land Rover Defender Louise and James were very close to Philip and the Queen. They spent the most time with them. In other news, discussions about stripping Harry of his Duke of Sussex title were held at the highest level and senior aides joked that he was a hostage of his wife Meghan, a new bombshell book has revealed. The new book by veteran royal writer Robert Jobson, due to be published on Thursday, shows how palace insiders would make jibes about Harry being a victim of Stockholm Syndrome as they blamed Meghan for the fallout with the royal family. Others, including some senior officials who feel Harry has turned his back on everything he has known, think he is the driving force in everything that happened and want to see him demoted to Mr. Mountbatten Windsor of Montecito, California. King Charles is understood to not to be in favor of axing Harry's royal title and has enduring love for his son, despite having made the decision that Meghan should not accompany Harry to Balmoral when the family gathered after the Queen died. Senior sources, noting how Harry had insisted that Meghan join him in Scotland, claim that his demands did not go down well with the family and they were all shocked by his behaviour. The royals' battles against Harry and Meghan, with the Princess of Wales saying her Windsor walkabout with them after the Queen's death was one of the hardest things she'd ever had to do dash was laid bare yesterday in the Daily Mail's first part of our serialisation of the forthcoming book Our King, Charles III, by Robert Jobson. It is understood that the king is saddened by the widening gulf between him and Harry, the royal expert claims, adding that Charles wishes he could see more of his grandchildren, Archie, three, and one-year-old Lilibet. Insiders also allege that the relationship between the king and the Sussexes becomes further from the possibility of repair with each interview Harry partakes in. One senior aide, discussing the rift, told Mr. Jobson, some blame Meghan Markle for the fallout, ignoring the fact that Harry seems to be the driving force in everything that happened. There was a point when officials joked Harry was the victim of Stockholm Syndrome, and he was Meghan's hostage, but now most just feel Harry has turned his back on everything he has known. Another insider pointed fault directly at Harry, citing the way he acted when Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II passed away. Prince William, Prince Andrew, Prince Edward, and Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, arrived at Balmoral around 5 p.m. on the day of the Queen's death. Harry did not turn up until 8 p.m. after reportedly declining to fly to Scotland with William following a dispute over Meghan. The Duke of Sussex allegedly insisted that Meghan should be with him, but Charles said she could not come. One source claimed Harry's demands did not go down well with the family, they were all shocked by his behaviour. They